My name is Dan Shaw, and this is a poem I wrote titled Mosaic Mo. Painted hubcaps, plastic grapes, pink flamingos, whirligigs. Mo let his lawn become overgrown with weeds. It started with a novelty mailbox. Moses built the manger scene all out of bottle caps red, white, and blue stripes, and targets. By August, there were more than a hundred wooden cows. Then he painted the whole house white with black spots, even the satellite dish. His neighbors built fences. He covered his car with beer labels. When he got tired of washing his silverware, he'd throw them out the window into the pond. When the muffler shop closed down, he put the 20-foot-tall muffler man and woman next to the hubcap totem poles. It looked like a miniature golf course. When the planning commission got involved, he built a 10-foot sign that said, Catholic bastards run city hall, and a few other inflammatory remarks, with upside-down sevens when he ran out of L's. He just wore down the city planners and the blackberries grew over the sign. Some folks drove the long way around to avoid it. Some folks came miles out of their way to see it. He'd ride through the streets on his bike at two miles an hour, specially equipped with a self-adjusting system of cables and training wheels, covered with reflectors and baskets, and he'd stop to pick up any scrap and inspect it and take it back home for art supplies. Mo believed in the right to free association. When Princess Di died, he built a three-ton perfume bottle covered in Happy Meals toys. When the garage was full of individually labeled paper mache figures from American history, and his wife wouldn't let them into the house, he divorced her. The miniature colonial village was almost completely covered in golf balls when his lumbago started acting up. If you brought him something he'd liked, he'd say, Betty Ford thanks you, or whatever figure he was working on. Some neighbors brought buckets of paint. The more paint you put on, the stronger it is, explained Mo. If he didn't like what you brought, he could lecture on and on about those people who don't understand art like those Catholic bastards at City Hall. I guess he was kind of lonely. On Independence Day, he had some extra red, white, and blue paint, so he painted stripes on the Virgin and Three Wise Men. On Halloween, they were orange and black. After Mo was gone, some people said, turn it into a museum, but it's condos now. If you go down to the railroad tracks, you can see two of Mo's creatures still standing in the tall weeds bigger than the world's largest groundhog, standing 12 feet high and made of more than four tons of adobe and 110,000 toothbrushes and lighters, Popeye and Nelson Mandela arm wrestling. Moe's been gone seven years, and I finally threw out my collection of old toothbrushes I was saving for him, but I still go down to the railroad tracks, and sometimes I'll pick up a rusted bit of scrap and bring it home. Thanks for listening. You can hear more of my poetry at danshaw.com.